Hey everybody, welcome to Unscripted, an RCC podcast. My name is Sam and I'm one of your hosts and I'm here with my Culpo, my friend and pastor. How are you doing today? So far so good, Sam. It's pretty early. You having a pretty good day? Yes. All right. Fantastic. Well, we've got a lot of stuff to cover today. Um, I mean, there's so much going on in um, our church. There's so much going on in the world. And I feel like we've just got so many things that we have to cover. So um, I thought we would start with um, church in, in the, last, the, the past few weeks. Okay, uh, but it's unscripted, right? Yeah, and So every time we've done this now, you always come up with these topics, and I find out by surprise what they are um, during, during the taping. Um, I thought today we could start with a topic from me. Since I don't know it's unscripted and all. I don't know if that's okay or not. It's got to go both ways. Oh, okay, that's fine. How about the Packers? How about the Packers? I'm really jazzed. Yeah, totally. I'm really super jazzed. I, I, like, it's the conference finals, yeah. which is, if you're a really good team, like once every five years kind of a thing, um, special. You're in the top 10% of teams in the league. So I'm super excited about that, just for them to make the conference finals. It's going to be a fun game. It makes it an amazingly good year, top 10% team. Um, and then the chance to go to the Super Bowl. Um, I've been a Packer fan all my life. That's only happened, I think, three times. So this would be four times, possibly, if it happens. That's uh, like once every 12 years or so. So that's this is rare. It might not happen again for 5, 10, 20 years. This is so, true. So I'm pretty excited about the Packers today. I'm actually really excited, too. Uh, I actually like sat down and watched it. Like With little kids, like they're always running around and just so loud, and sometimes it's tif- difficult. But our boys were like excited to watch it this time. So I was just sitting there watching it, enjoying some dinner, and like watching the game. It was fantastic. It, it was a great day. So I actually watched like the whole game this last time, and it was awesome. They're, they're so good right now. It's really fun to to just just to see it, and also to see fans in the stands. That was pretty cool too. Yeah, watching the whole game for me is literally the whole game. So if I go to the bathroom or get something to drink or whatever, and I miss a play, I'll rewind and rewatch that play, even if nothing even special happened on the play. Like I watch every play of every game every year. So this this is huge. It's good. I'm really happy for you. Yeah. I'm really happy for you. <laughs> All right, so so that's that's your uh, off scripted thing, okay? That's I get one. You get one. Okay, okay. you can right. get you can get as many as you want. It's okay. Well, talk about fishing, <laughs> aquariums. There's there's all kind of topics. Yeah, th- th- I agree. Um, so I, I thought that was a great thing to start the weekend off. I mean, it was a good good way to start the weekend off. And to include that, like this last weekend at church, the next day it was like an awesome two days in a row. Yes, it's it's so fun to be back. Second Sunday now that we've been back in person. Yeah. Um, I, I said it in the services. Like I, I didn't realize how great it was to be able to be at church in person for my entire life until you couldn't. For real. And then, then once something's taken away, you realize just how much you love it. And that kind of goes for everything in life, right? Like you, you don't think about how great your teeth are until you have a toothache. Um, so, so to be back in church on Sunday was super special these last two weeks. Yeah. And then this week was particularly special for a particular reason, but I want to get to that in just a minute okay. because the, the few weeks leading up to that, uh, Sunday, uh, have been, have not been easy. Yeah. <laughs> They've been really hard weeks yeah. and, and I don't think it'd be right for us to really not address that or just kind of gloss over it because yeah, go for it because it's been really tough so so my my questions with with that part particular thing is can you just give a, a quick update of of what's happened um just for anybody who hasn't known and then we can just talk through a couple of those things yeah uh, first of all if if someone wants more details uh, and they didn't get my all church emails about it um just just go to the website email me and i'll send them to you to, to catch up yeah. So that that's the best. There's so much information to share. We can't re-talk about it here again. Um, but um, what happened? This is a, it's been the hardest three weeks now, basically, um, of my 18 and a half years. Yeah. Um, so that it gives you some perspective. Um, really, really tough. But um, a, a couple of weeks ago, two of our staff members resigned for personal reasons, um, which makes it impossible for me to talk about uh, their personal lives. But uh, super hard and just to, to find that out in one day and, and to lose, you know, two full time people that are really, really good at their jobs. Um, and both really, really good at their jobs for years. Um, to, to, to have them both step away and, and have it be amidst turmoil besides, um, with sensitive stuff involved is just, it's just super tough. Yeah, it is. It, it hasn't been easy. It's been a lot of conversations, a lot of, um, different things that I've had to go into the last couple of weeks that have made it extra hard because um, I had I had uh, I don't know how many a bunch of phone calls even it's three weeks in 
Um, I had a bunch of phone calls yesterday and over over 30 text messages about it yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a big deal. Yeah. And and those things, I mean, that was yesterday or Saturday, but I'm assuming it was pretty much every day for the last yeah, number of... Yeah, to, to varying degrees, maybe, yeah. you know, 20 to 50 per day. Yeah, so my um, first question is, is, how are you holding up? Um, You know, it, it to work at a church is is just like everyone else who has a job. Some days are difficult. And that yeah. just, just is what it is. It's not some Pollyanna place where every day you go to work and everything's amazing and we sit around and have lollipops and cherry pie all day. I mean... I like cherry pie. Can we, like, Yeah, me that? too. Like, pie. Like, <laughs> if you're great at making cherry pie, you know, bring them. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, some days some days at work are hard for anybody. So... For sure. You, you can't, like, whine too much about it. A lot of people have really tough work days. Um, so, it's like that. I mean, it, it's a tough stretch. And I've been through tough stretches before. Maybe this is the toughest. But um, it's a tough stretch, and you show up, and you try to have a really good attitude. You pray and and maintain your faith. You know, I do trust God through everything, even even bad days, and that's that's maybe one of the best signs of real faith. You know, every everyone's faithful when life is going awesome. God is great, the world is wonderful, and you know, whatever. I just got a giant raise today, and the kids are perfect, and you know, we have those days, and it's like God is awesome. Um, but you know, the real test of faith is is God awesome on your crummy days. So for me, God's still awesome. I'm still trying to show up and serve him every day while serving the people of this church. That doesn't really change on a good day or a bad day. I don't know. I don't know if I, I might have went sidetrack. I don't know if I answered your question well. But. You know, it's good. I mean, I think it's important to to realize that um, this does affect us personally. So that's why I want to ask how you're doing because yeah. um, it's real. And you're right. Like everybody has t- difficult days and difficult jobs. And so this isn't anything special in that regard. Like there's going to be difficult things yeah. and you have to be able to say God is good. Um, especially on those days when things are so difficult, uh, even though it's maybe the hardest days to do so. Yeah. But I do want to say that the slight difference with the church stuff um, is not only like, like if somebody messes up or, or if somebody has to resign for personal reasons, whatever uh, at another job, it, it's often like the ties are just cut and like, then like the job of the people that are in charge are done. Correct. Um, in our case, it, it's friendship. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our case, it's um, caring for um, everybody involved, and that at RCC, two thousand people are affected. Exactly, and so you're you're. Caring. And each of those people has their own set of feelings, their own past experiences, their own questions, which is all fair. I mean, that's that's absolutely fair. There's, it's a giant family, um, so it, it, it's it's a very um, diverse church family. Yeah, uh, with diverse opinions and expectations. And I think that's good. That that's a healthy thing. I think it's a, one but of, but it doesn't make things easy. Yeah, it's one of my favorite parts about the church yeah, is that definitely. it's so diverse. And I mean, you've had phone calls. I, I, there was one phone call you got this last week that I thought was outstanding. Um, and and uh, you just mentioned you didn't say who, the name, but you you said like um, that they were just hoping that we were handling the situation really well, and you you agreed on how to handle it. And it was just such a cool thing when people. Um, want to follow Jesus in the way they take care of situations and and talking about forgiveness and kindness and, and all kinds of different parts of it. And so I, I just appreciate we've had a number of people who have been just so encouraging during this. Most everybody. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's, there's, there's been an avalanche of encouraging and faithful and helpful and, and understanding. I, it really has. I mean, people have questions. That's, that's mm-hmm. totally fair, but there, there's been very little, um, critical comments or, or judgment or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, the, our church family, once again, has proven to be an amazing group of people. Yeah, and, and not only our church family, but the staff. I mean, we, we've been down to people. And, yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons it's taken another week to get the podcast going, like, just because, like, the standard of who would do what is, is just changed. But one week removed, that's amazing. Like, we're doing this with with a slimmed down staff, and they are just crushing it and, like, having services. They have been amazing services. We've done live mm-hmm. services, so you can watch online at 9. Like, every little piece that we were, like, feeling like it was going to be a lot to pull together with yeah. a, a larger staff, we pulled together with a smaller one because they've just worked their tails off. It's been awesome. No one around here is afraid to work. Yeah. You know, and, and that's been that way for 18 years. I mean, any any place that does well, whether it's a team or a church or a business, you can't be afraid to work because you can solve a lot of problems with hard work. Yeah. Um, so our staff is very dedicated to our church family, and, and they're not afraid to show up every day and work super hard while also maintaining a really good attitude. 
Uh, so that's it, it, they're fantastic people to work with. And um, as as part of this church myself, I mean, I'm part of the church family. I'm excited for who's on staff here and and just how dedicated they are to to being a church family that first of all follows God's will the best we can, yeah. and then treats people with love. Um, we got we have a church family that's really good at that. We have a staff that's really good at that. Yeah. And and through that all that there's the, maybe um one of the one of the wins here one of the best parts of this is um we were able to hire a new worship director um his name's sean i mean you know him. yeah uh, sean's been part of the church almost from the very beginning has led worship here for almost from the beginning you know for once in a while as a volunteer um i know him super well um he's obviously i mean if anyone's ever been here he's obviously very very talented but what most people don't know yet and they're going to find out is um He's a he's a better man than he is a singer or a musician. By far, he's just he's just a really great man, faithful and humble and and loving of other people and understanding. Just every the things I respect in a person, he he's he's all that and more. So and that's saying something because he's an incredible musician so, yeah. and singer. I mean, so he's that's really saying something about his character. Yeah, if you attend RCC and and hear the music and think, wow, that's really good, um, you should get to know Sean because as a person. He's even better than what you see on stage. Yeah, which is awesome. It was funny. I, I was introducing him on, on Sunday, and I literally felt like I got cheered off the stage. That was mm-hmm. the last announcement before we started worship, and I was like, hey, and you guys maybe heard the announcement. Sean's our new worship director, and people just were so excited. And I was like, all right, I, I see what you think about me. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and for me personally, it's awesome because Sean has grown up in his faith here. Yeah. Um, we've become friends over the years, and he's he's gotten so much deeper and, and more more. I don't know, committed to his faith and studying it. Like even as far as he and I studying theology textbooks together in the past years, just really, really solid. And it's been fun to watch him grow and be ready for a position like this. Yeah. Um, he's been ready for a bit and, and it, this just, the timing was perfect for him. And, um, he's, he's making a, a, a major sacrifice to come on board here. Um, just, just very, very special. So I'm super excited. We're, we're, we're in a really tough time right now, but I feel like we're coming out of it. And now with being able to meet in person again and Sean coming on board, um, I'm, I'm excited for this next season. This, this winter into spring all the way up to Easter could, could be super fun and, and very, a very special time in our church history. Yeah. I mean, it is, it's been a, it's been a season of a lot of difficult challenges for the whole world, honestly. Yeah. Um, but it's been really sweet to have a, a bit of hope, um, in, in the midst of that and just some encouragement and, and just some ways that God's been good to us and seen us through the, the challenges. Yeah, I think that, you know, the lesson in it, whether you're talking about the whole world and COVID or all the crazy stuff going on politically or whatever, or what's happening in our church right now, or even in, 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 each, in each of our personal lives at home, God is still God. Yeah. You know, God is still all knowing and all powerful and all present. He's still in control. Um, he can still be trusted. He hasn't changed. You know, the events of the world come and go. You know, if you look through history, there's world wars and everything. There's, there's so much stuff. Um, but, but God hasn't changed. And his love for us hasn't changed. And his desire to have a relationship with each of us individually hasn't changed. Um, so if you can hold on to those things in the tough times, that's when those things are actually the sweetest. Yeah, You know, honestly, right. a lot of times people are, are super close to God in their best days, like I said before. You know, for me, you know, if I'm having one of my best days, the, the kids are great and the fish are biting and it's sunny out and all that, you know, I, I honestly don't think about God that much. I'm having so much fun sometimes. And mm-hmm. maybe that looks bad for me, but it's true. Yeah. Um, but, but to... Have a faith and have someone who loves you and, and no matter what you do or how you mess up uh, to hold on to on your worst days, that's when faith really becomes real. Yeah, so it's I, super true. I, I, I hope that's so much for our people. Yeah. Like that can be a bonus in their lives because all of us are going to go through tough days, whether at work or at home, whatever. You, you can't escape it in life. The world's going to go crazy again in a couple of years for some other reason. I mean, it just happens. Yeah. I remember a story I was listening to for a podcast or something, and it was talking about the difference between different types of faith. And, and one person is like worshiping and being thanking God whenever things are going really well. And the other person is um, like experienced the worst, most awful week of their life. Um, and it's just really just messing them up. And then and talk about how it's Friday and it's been the worst week, but Sunday's coming. And even though like things have been difficult, they're still going to worship and yeah. they're still going to be grateful for God and, and following him that he's good even in the midst of the struggle. And, and that's always stuck with me because I think our faith is really shown to be what it is in the struggles. And if we can worship when it is the difficult times, then I think, I think we can see our faith for what it really is. Yeah, I'm just super hardcore with that. I mean, I've been a Christian for a long time now and been through a lot of stuff as a Christian. Um, 
you know, for me, honestly, um, everyone, the, the 2,000 people that are part of this church, they could all get fantastic jobs in other cities tomorrow and all leave the church. And there's nobody left. And therefore, there's no money left. And so I do what? Don't pay the building insurance payment. And then a fire burns the place down. So there's no people, there's no building, there's no anything. I still got God. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to send a beach and I'll figure it out. God hasn't left. He never leaves. And, and that's, that's so important. Like God never leaves you. Yeah. And, and you're going to be okay. Just stick close to God. So that's, that's it for me. And, and I want that to be it for, for other people too. Definitely. So it, it's been a, a stretch for us um, as a church. And I feel like we've got some encouragement and the last, especially this last Sunday, it just felt so exciting. Yeah. Um, but it's not just our church. It's, it's the whole world has experienced the craziest year yeah. in years and years. It just seems like the last world war, right? Like it's just been nuts. Um, yeah, who'd ever think there'd be like an, a, an attack on the Capitol? Come on. It, it's insane, right? Yeah. Like the, the most insane week. Um, I, I don't even know like what the words are for it. Uh, but it, it kind of gets at this reality that we're facing in a polarized world. And, and we actually, we asked people to, to submit questions and, um, we got one of our, one of the most exciting questions about it. It was like the perfect question because it, it fits okay. so perfectly into what we have. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull it out here. I'm going to read it. Okay. Um, but I, I think it gets at, this other thing I really want to talk about with you for a little bit, because we have such a polarized um, world and everything. And, and here, I'll just read the question. It says, uh, you had asked for suggestions on topics for the future. With all the politics that were front and center this year, a close friend and I have discovered that we are polar opposites on the political spectrum. While this hasn't damaged our friendship, it seems we have been very good at ignoring the elephant in the room. It has made me wonder how people can think, feel, believe very differently without someone being, in quotes, wrong. Any ideas? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well, first of all, that, that, that makes me think of something I've been hearing for years now. And it, it, there's little stretches where you hear it more than others. But, but it's a question that's been live here for you know, the whole time. Um, often people ask me, what's RCC's position on something? Yeah. What is what does the church think about this or that? Whether it's politics or a Bible matter or personal things or whatever. What's RCC's position? And um, this 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 question sort of touches on that. And and to be very very clear, I don't speak for RCC, right? Like there's there's two thousand people here. Yeah. Um, the RCC, the church family of two thousand, yeah, doesn't have a lot of positions. You know, yeah. we believe in God. As, as a church family, um, we believe in Jesus as, as a church family. But some people are here still exploring that. They don't know how they feel about God, and they don't know how they feel about Jesus, and they don't know if they can trust the Bible, and they're still part of the church family, right? So even that, it would be a core teaching of our church, but it isn't necessarily our church position because there's 2,000 people, and we're all equally valuable. I work here. I've worked here from day one. It doesn't make me more valuable than to God than the person who showed up the first time this Sunday or the person who will show up for the first time a month from now. So, so in matters like this, politics or otherwise, there isn't an RCC position. It'd be like at home to say, you know, what's your family's position on pizza? Yeah. Well, you know, Junior likes pepperoni and Susie likes, you know, cheese or whatever. Yeah, we all kind of like pizza, but not all the same, not all the same. Well, I don't want pizza today. You do. Like, there isn't a family position on pizza and there's not a church position on most everything. Yeah. So that, that's first of all. Um, and, and we shouldn't, I, I think churches all the time err in that way. They speak for people they shouldn't be speaking for. Um, secondly, uh, what's important here is God's position. There, there's no RCC position. There's God's position. And that's why it's so critical on Sundays as we teach. We share God's position on things from the Bible. I mean, I, I, I mean sometimes maybe personal opinion slips in, but that shouldn't. Like it, it should be God's position from Scripture or Jesus' comments from Scripture. That, that's all that really matters. And that's what sermons are all about here now, though. In this situation, or if we're having coffee somewhere, or hanging out, having a pizza, or whatever, going to a Packer game, that's the place for personal opinions, right? This is true. Yeah. And, and you and I, we can have personal opinions. It, it's okay. It doesn't represent the church. It might not even represent God will all the time, because maybe we're a little bit off sometimes of what God's opinion is. It happens. But for your personal opinion to my personal opinion, you should be able to talk about those elephants in the room. Like it's okay that it's your thought. You like X, and I like Y, and. You like sausage and I like pepperoni. So what? Let's, I'd, I'd like to experience why do you like it? I, I do like pepperoni on pizza. I, that's how I eat it. Why do you like sausage so much? It, it amazes me because I'd rather not have it. 
So I'd, I'd rather learn what it is and talk about it than ignore it. Let's just get a cheese pizza and let's get no meat because we can't get along. I, I don't like that. That's totally fair. I, I completely agree on pretty much everything you said. So the, the thing that I, I really appreciate is the fact that every Sunday, um, what we try to do is represent God and represent Jesus and, and teach what, how Jesus would want us to teach. Yeah. Um, so that, that's like the most important thing for me. And I know it's the same, most important thing for you. Um, what I love about that and what I love about this question is the fact that the church is one of the few places left in the world where people from very different backgrounds, very different political beliefs, everything else can come into the same room, look each other in the eye, smile, be happy to see each other, sing worship songs together, hear a message about how God wants us to live together and leave and not have like hurt each other, yelled insults at each other or yeah. whatever else. So I think that's an incredible thing about the church and, and, and how it can show people how to have friendships even with people that are different um, political beliefs or whatever beliefs than them. And I think it's a really valuable lesson. In a, in a healthy church. Yes. Not all churches are healthy. This is true. This so is true. for example, um, maybe my strongest position personally in life is that God is amazing. Okay. Mm-hmm. God's amazing. Um, at our church, most everyone would say God's amazing. And you could say it's an RCC's position, sort of, but it really isn't because someone could come here and they don't believe that just yet. They've been through a lot in life and they don't know how they feel about God. That's okay. You still fit here and you can be part of the service and you can observe, and you can talk to people. And we can have coffee afterwards. And maybe I think God's amazing and you're still figuring it out. We should be able to talk about that mutual yeah. with mutual respect. With a goal, right? There should be a goal of of both people agreeing that they want to come to a better understanding of who God is, both people wanting to know and have a better relationship with Jesus. And they have to get to that point where they accept Jesus and like believe in him. But the goal is there. It's not like, so I can tell you you're super wrong and you can tell me I'm super wrong and then we're going to run away. There's like a a healthy goal to the conversation. Straight out of the Bible. Dude dude comes to Jesus and says, I have faith, but help me when I don't have faith, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's it. And you're, you're, you're talking to Jesus himself. Definitely. And Jesus was okay with that. So we have to be okay with that. And, and in a church, the biggest issue is faith. Does God exist? Do you follow God? Do you? That's the biggest issue. If we can have an agreement there that we can work together and get along together and respect each other and love each other and help each other, even though we don't see that the same way, politics or everything else after that is so much smaller. You know, you're, you're a Republican, I'm Democrat, or I'm Democrat, you're, whatever, who cares? Let's talk about it. And there's, there's things we disagree with politically. Mm-hmm. doesn't make me like you less. doesn't make us not friends. That's, that's awesome. It actually makes our conversations more fun. It does. Well, <laughs> if you respect the other exactly. person again, and, and so often people lose that. And I, I think that's it because people hold certain things so closely, right? Don't hold everything so closely. <laughs> a lot of it's just stupid. <laughs> It just is. I'm pretty old. You know, if you love Democrats, you're going to find out they're not all great. If you love Republicans, you're going to find out they're not all great. That's just a fact. You're so right. don't hold it so tightly. And maybe that's the thing that I think has made all of this stuff so difficult right now, right? Um, because people have, have taken political ideas or just personalities that they want to support or whatever else. And they've said that's gospel, right? Yeah. I mean, in the church, we would say like the gospel is the most important thing. Um, it's the good news about who Jesus is and, and how we can have a relationship with God. So there, there's, there's that. That's the most important thing. Um, people have expanded what the most important things are. And we have to, I think, come back from that and say, these are the most important things to the best of our ability right now and how we read it. And those other things, let's disagree and let's figure it out together. Yeah. I don't know. My belief is the most important thing is to have a, a good, healthy relationship with God. Yeah. That, that's what I believe. That's the most important thing. And everything else is far from it. Yeah. So, so here's my, my, my pushy question. What's the church's role in a climate like the one we have? I and mean, we've had a few hard weeks. We, as a church, we've, which we're coming out of, we've had a, a few, a number of hard weeks as a country and as a world. Yeah. What's the church's role in the midst of, of that kind of stuff? I think, first of all, to the best, and when you say the church, it's 2,000 people. It's not Mike. It's well, not the staff. Even right? bigger than that, too, right? Yeah. It can be the church. Universal. Church. Yeah. Because yeah. someone in India who believes like I do, we're part of the same church. Exactly. We're going to hang out in heaven together. Exactly. Um, so the church is, is vast, but, um, the church's role is to, to, I hope, be a model of how things are done right. Yeah. Right? Like a, a faith model. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, we just went through a bunch of tough stuff here at church. How did we handle it? Was it handled with love and 
and grace and mercy, but also truth. Yes. And and so you model that, and you model it within the church, and then we should model it in our personal lives, at work and at home with our kids, um, and even politically, right? Like, yeah, you can have an opinion, that, and you should have an opinion. You can share opinions. You can talk about things. You can try to change things. It's all beautiful. You can't attack other people. Yes. That's just out. <laughs> you can't It's go. just out. Oh, yeah. It's just you can't hurt others, either with your words or with your actions or physically. You can't hurt people. Yeah. That's just out. That's not part of God's plan at all. Go look at a Bible. Yeah, well, and we're recording this on Tuesday, so Monday was MLK Day. Um and celebrate the life of a man who said, we're going to help and further the cause of people's rights and dignity without being violent. Yep. And, and he's still respected, what, 50 years later exactly. for his efforts, as have other people throughout history. Exactly. Right? There's so many people through history that, that made a really positive impact on their community around the world. Yeah. Um, that's the impact we should have. And, and maybe you're super famous and you do impact the whole world like, like Martin Luther King or Abraham Lincoln or whoever. Or maybe you just impact your world. Yes. But we all have the same charter. Maybe, maybe someone else is so smart or so talented, they can impact lots and lots of people. All of us can impact our personal world. And, and the thing that I've noticed with people that do impact lots and lots of people, they're really deliberate about impacting a few people. And that, that's how it grows. Oh. Um, so if you, if you can't impact the people around you, you're not ready to impact the people far from you. Yeah. So start with the people that are closest to you. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Any takeaways from this 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 chat? Because we've covered a lot of ground. Yeah, we've been all over the place. Um, I think the takeaway is this, uh, and I, I I guess I already said it, but but God is still good. Mm-hmm. God is still all powerful. God's still in control. So whether it's church issues, our political issues in our country, our world issues like the pandemic, um, you, you return to your faith in that stuff. You don't run from it. Yeah. Right? And that people are making that mistake worldwide right now. Because because of COVID and all the things going on, there's more and more anger. Everyone wants to fight about everything, and 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 that they're just going the exact wrong direction. Instead, when times are tough, personally, politically, in the world, whatever COVID, all of it, when times are tough, that's the time to return to God, right? Yeah. So that's it. That's the takeaway. Uh, pray more, worship more, read your Bible more, be kind more, be loving more. God is love. Mm-hmm. So so go be love to someone and experience God while you do it. That's how you get through tough times. I couldn't agree more. I'm just going to echo it and say I completely agree. And um, there's never been a more important time to follow Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so if you believe in him, take stock in the way that you're living. And this is the perfect time to. If, you're like, if your life sucks for some reason right now, don't waller in it. Instead, go do something kind for someone else. Mm-hmm. And, and you'll see it's going to turn around. And that's the opposite of what we do. Oftentimes, right? Things are going bad. So we kind of cloister up and want everything for us to fix it for us and make us happy. That's just not God's equation. If life isn't going well, just go try to do something good for someone else and see it then how your life starts to get better. That's just how God does things. He designed it that way. We don't have a, we don't have a way to change it. It's better just to get on his plan. I couldn't agree more. I, I think that's the perfect way to end. All right. Thanks for chatting. Thank you. All right. Have a good week, everybody.